Welcome back to Monday's DBT Group Skyline Academy. Um, today we are going to be talking about the module on interpersonal effectiveness. Now, interpersonal effectiveness is just a fancy word for learning how to build and recognize healthy relationships and healthy behaviors in relationships. So that might be learning more about how to build new friendships, um, learning how to fix ones that we maybe need to work on, and then also maybe getting rid of relationships that aren't good for us anymore. So there's three goals to interpersonal effectiveness. The first is getting others to do what you want and need them to do. Now, that might sound like, okay, we're going to learn how to manipulate everyone in our lives, but that's not the case. Sometimes we do have things that we legitimately want people to do and need people to do. That's okay. Um, and so we're going to learn how to express ourselves in a really clear and healthy way that's respectful of the people around us, but also learning how to advocate for ourselves and stand up for ourselves when we need to. Also learning how to say no in a respectful and confident way. So not everything that people ask us to do is appropriate or kind or does anything to benefit us or maybe even hurts us. So learning how to say no in a respectful way, but it still has confidence is something that we all need to learn how to do at some point in our lives. Our second goal is to build newer and healthier relationships and ending old ones that aren't good for us. So learning how to express when our feelings are hurt or repair those feelings when we've hurt someone else um, and addressing problems before they get too big. So sometimes we let problems kind of stew and simmer and that's when we see some of our bigger blowups, right? So we want to make sure that we're able to express to our close relationships when we have a problem before it starts to affect the relationship too much. Um, also, just learning how to find and build better and healthier relationships. Sometimes it's kind of hard to spot, like when you first meet someone, if this is going to be a good friendship or not, or if you can trust someone. So we're going to give you some tools on kind of how to spot, you know, is this going to be a good thing? Is this going to help me or hurt me? Or maybe we're not sure yet, but just learning how to, how to find those relationships and then build on them. And then our third goal is something called keeping to the middle. Um, so there's a couple things in keeping to the middle. So it's balancing our need for relationships and for time by ourselves. So of course, everyone wants to have good, healthy relationships. You probably want more friends. You want to have good relationships for the people who take care of you at home and with your siblings and with your peers and your teachers. But we also need to be okay by ourselves. We need to be happy with who we are as individuals and being okay alone, being able to sit with ourselves in a quiet place and not get bored, finding ways to entertain our minds and stay creative when we're alone. Um, keeping to the middle also means accepting people and our relationships while acknowledging they may need to change. So... <sighs> We want to accept people as they are, but just because we're accepting someone as they are doesn't mean that what they're doing is okay. So we can say, you know what, I love you or I care about you, but I'm also noticing that maybe this relationship isn't very healthy for me, or I've noticed that you haven't been showing up for me the way that I've been showing up for you. So it's kind of acknowledging that like people are people and they're going to make mistakes, but also recognizing when maybe some of our friendships or close relationships need to change and how do we express ourselves when we feel that. So there's a couple of different tools in interpersonal effectiveness, but today we're going to talk about the acronym DEAR MAN. So I'm going to lay that out for you on the board like I did last week, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a situation that I've seen come up at Skyline a few times where maybe you can use this tool to kind of help you with your interpersonal effectiveness skills. All right, guys. 
So for today's acronym for interpersonal effectiveness, we're going to talk about Dear Man. So this is an acronym about how to get what you want in a situation in a healthy and confident way. So, so when you need to express your needs or your wants to someone, how do we do it in a way that's going to get us what we want, but is also still respectful and kind? So Dear man is in purple and then each of what the letters mean is in red. So first, when we are in a situation where we're trying to get something that we want or express ourselves to someone who maybe isn't understanding where we're coming from or willing to meet us halfway, the first thing we're going to do is describe. What are the facts? What are, what's really going on in this situation? Not how you feel, not how they might feel, not any sort of judgment, but what are just the plain facts of the situation. So we're going to describe the facts. Next, next, we're going to express our feelings and our opinions. These are going to be I statements, not you should have or you should not have or not you made me feel this way. Just simple express, I feel blank when you blank or I felt this when you did this. We want to make sure that we're expressing how we feel, not putting blame on other people so that we get our point across in a way that's going to be conducive to getting what we want out of the situation. The next step after we describe the situation, express our feelings and opinions using our I statements, we're going to be assertive. We're going to assert, which means to clearly ask for what you want or say no very clearly to the situation. So if somebody's asking you to do something that you don't want to do, you've described with the situation, you've expressed your feelings and opinions, and you've decided, I don't want that to happen, or I do want this to happen, that's going to be your next step. You're going to assert what you want or say no clearly. Remember, we're being respectful as well. The R stands for reinforce. So what are the positive effects of the situation? So... What are you going to get out of this situation? So say you've described everything, you've expressed yourself, you've asserted what you do or do not want to happen. Reinforce means to explain why. So say you say, I do not want to play with you because you hurt my feelings yesterday. So you asserted what you wanted. I do not want to play with you. And then you reinforced it by saying, because you hurt my feelings yesterday. Maybe your feelings are still hurt. So our M stands for mindful. So we want to stay mindful when we're in these situations. Stick to your goals. Say what you want or need and ignore the attacks. So sometimes when we're trying to say no to someone or expressing what we need and why, people get defensive. People lash out at us. We want to stay mindful. We don't need to let other people's feelings destroy our goals. So what are you trying to get out of this situation? Stay focused on that. Our next step is to appear confident. So this is all about body language. While we're doing all of these things, we want to make sure we're making eye contact. We're standing up straight. We don't have our arms crossed like we feel mad or sad. We want to have open body language and let people know, I see you, I hear you, but I need you to see me and hear me too. And our last step is to negotiate. Sometimes you have to give a little to get what you want. What do they see as a solution? And maybe you need to ask for something smaller or offer a different solution. Now, sometimes this isn't going to apply. Sometimes people want too much from us or they don't want to give us what we need. That's not going to be appropriate to negotiate in those situations. But sometimes, like say your peer wants to play with you, you can negotiate, maybe I'll play with you tomorrow. Or if you could apologize, I'd be willing to play with you. So I'm going to talk about a situation that I've seen happen a lot at Skyline um, so that you guys can apply the dear man maybe when we get back to school or in your lives at home or with your friends outside of school, okay? All right, guys, so to end our video today, I wanted to give you a situation where you might be able to use dear man. So I'm going to describe something that 
might happen at, at a regular day at Skyline. Um, and then talk about how you would use Dear Man to solve your problems and to help you get what you want and express yourself in a confident but respectful way. So earlier in the day, your peer asked you if you wanted to play soccer with them during PE. And you said, for sure, this is a peer that normally you guys get along, you have a really good time together, and you're excited to play with them during PE. Before PE, you guys were doing a, a math activity and your peer got super frustrated. They didn't understand the math work, they were feeling overwhelmed, and they let their feelings get the better of them and they blew out in class. They started yelling and calling people names, including you. Now, you know you didn't do anything wrong, but it still hurts your feelings. We all know that people get frustrated at, at you know, random things, and we get frustrated when we're not sure what we're supposed to be doing or we misunderstood the directions, and you know it's not about you, but it still hurt your feelings that they lashed out at you. Your peer calmed down, they returned to safe behavior, they came back to class, and they got all of their work done and now it's time to go to PE but you're still thinking about that name that they called you or that mean thing that they said to you and you don't really want to play with them anymore you'd rather hang out with your other peers or do something by yourself your peer walks up to you and says hey let's play soccer now what do you do so we're gonna apply dear man first we're gonna describe and say I know that I told you we could play soccer earlier, but you really hurt my feelings earlier when you said that to me, whatever that was. So that's you describing the situation. I know what I said. I know I said I play soccer with you and you expressed your feelings and emotions, but you hurt my feelings when you said that. Next thing we're gonna do is assert. So you'll say, you really hurt my feelings when you said that thing earlier. I don't want to play with you right now. So that's a way of saying, not forever, it's not the end of the world, but right now I don't feel like playing with you because you hurt my feelings. So we've described, we've expressed, we've asserted, next we're going to reinforce. I don't want to play with you right now, maybe later, but you did really hurt my feelings and I don't want to hang out with you anymore. It would make me really happy if you apologized and then maybe we could play. So you're reinforcing how you feel, why you feel that way, and what do you want from the situation? Do you want an apology? Maybe you don't. Maybe you just want to go play and that's okay too. This is just an example of, I know I told you, you were, we were going to play earlier, but that thing that you said really hurt my feelings. I don't want to play with you right now. I think you owe me an apology. So that's all of our dear steps. Now we're going to stay mindful. Our peer might get really upset with us. They might be like, you promised me you would play with me. Or maybe they start to cry or maybe they just storm off. Who knows? Maybe they take it really well and that's awesome. And maybe you wouldn't need to keep having a conversation. Maybe they would apologize and move on. However, oftentimes when our feelings get hurt or when we express ourselves like this to our peers, we get a big reaction, especially if they're having a hard day already. They might not just, they just might not be ready or able to meet you where you're at. So this is why we're going to stay mindful. So our peer might blow up on us, might say something else mean, might cry, might beg, who knows, but we're going to stay mindful. What's our goal? We want to get an apology. We want to move on with our day. Okay, so we're going to stay mindful in this moment. We're not going to react to those big feelings that we might be getting, whether they're mad or sad. So you're going to appear confident while you're doing this. You want to stay mindful and appear confident. So that's our M and our A. We're going to make eye contact. We're going to have open body language. We're going to keep a safe distance. And we're going to clearly express ourselves in a calm and respectful tone. We're not going to get loud. We're not going to whisper. We're not going to look away. We're not going to show our shoulders. We're not going to cross our arms. We're not going <sighs> to... We're going to stay calm and respectful. Maybe you want to negotiate. Maybe you say, look, I understand where you're coming from. I know you got frustrated earlier, but I don't want to play with you right now. Maybe tomorrow or maybe later 
or maybe if you apologize to me, negotiate. So at the end of the day, that's a situation in which you could use dear man. I know I said I wanted to play with you earlier, but what you said really hurt my feelings. I didn't like what you said and I feel like you owe me an apology because of what you said. Saying mindful, appear confident, if you apologize to me, I might think about playing with you or maybe I'll play with you tomorrow. So again, that's just one example of many in ways that you could use dear man. So I would love for you guys to think about over the next week, maybe a situation where you could have used dear man and it would have gone better or ways that you're seeing how you could use that while you're at home with your family. Um, so thanks so much for watching kiddos and I will see you next week.